Hello fellow guardians, it's me Shrenichi here, back with a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the DLC, or the fall expansion for Destiny 2 Beyond the Light. So, that has been mentioned on Tuesday, they had their big 6 feet reveal of the game, if you want to put it in that sense. And Destiny 2 has really showcased itself this past year in 2020 so it seems like 2020 is still gonna have to be a, a good year hopefully for gamers for the outside world it's still in turmoil but for gamers i think we're gonna have a good year destiny 2 has really showed its ass if you want to put it in a sense these past couple of weeks and these past couple of days before we talk about beyond the light i want to mention something that's been really big that came out of this week's article is that pvp is great again ladies and gentlemen yes pvp has came back to its natural habitat bungie and of course the sandbox changes and two of those developers out there has decided to take out skill-based matchmaking out of pvp the only thing that's going to be left with skill-based matchmaking is the competitive playlist, Trials, and Iron Banner, and I believe is still going to have skill-based matchmaking. That is fine. I feel like skill-based matchmaking need to be in those type of game modes because they're competitive game modes. But when it's a quick playlist, you don't need to have skill-based matchmaking in there. And hopefully that fellow games will follow Bungie's lead and take out skill-based matchmaking to make multiplayer great again. So let's talk about Beyond the Light. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that in another video. Um, go Beyond the Light. A new power is born out of the Agent Pyramid ships above Europa. A frozen frontier and a dark empire has risen beneath. <sighs> Darkness has really showed itself in the past couple of days. So, unfortunately, there is a new banner underneath the darkness, a fall, a fallen kill of darkness. So, like, I believe there's different types of darkness. So far, I believe there's different darkness for the Hive, the Taken, and, of course, the Vex. The Cabal, I'm not too sure. It seems like the Cabal are very scared of the darkness. Falling kill of darkness is something that would be very interesting. Now, I know a lot of people are kind of like wondering why isn't there a new enemy race for beyond the light i'm not too sure maybe they are a new enemy with different type of abilities and, you know different challenging enemies that we're going to come across i don't know i know a lot of people was mentioning in the comment section when i was reading through the reveal of the comments why isn't there a new enemy why is it the fallen again and again well like I mentioned, maybe there's a different types of darkness. Maybe they're just the normal fallen who are scared of darkness and don't want to follow that through or something in that nature. I don't know. Um, I know a lot of people are probably wondering of that, but that's like a big discussion to go further in details because I don't want to talk about that. But let me know in the comment section down below, are you okay with be having a falling kill again? Or do you wish with this new expansion there was a new enemy in there? But judging by some of the things that I read about Beyond the Light, I think the falling is still very much involved. And the raid has a lot to do with it. Join your fellow guardians and bring the Empire, at, bring the Empire down at any cost. Even if that means you have to be the darkness yourself. Now the new destination. Um, a lot of people has been looking forward for this destination since Destiny 1 days when they first saw it with the Frozen Planet. And when I first saw it, I thought, wow, this is a really cool game. This is really great. Seeing all these different areas that you get to explore. But unfortunately, when we got the game, we got an unfinished game that didn't really make any sense. And Bungie had to take the time out of itself to make their game better over the years. And I think it's really fine as niche, finally, as a game company, to really say to themselves, we want to take this game beyond the limits. And they really did. Europia is one of those planets that caught everybody's attention during the Destiny 1 days. And they got caught out because Activision was more care about the money than the franchise game of itself. Um, the Fallen have rallied and built their new empire on the icy moon of Europia. Brave the un glacier, the unrenting glacier frontier, infiltrate the Golden Age biotech facility, and uncover the secrets that lie deep under the agent ice. Now, a lot of people feel like the deep crypt uh, stone is going to be reveal itself in Europia's planet because they did mention that. 
is somewhere on a frozen planet. And for me personally, I'm really looking forward for that. Another thing that I want to mention is where do Ada kind of plays into this part? Because the Black Armory, if she's going to be involved this season, because she's been very quiet these past couple of seasons. Now we're seeing Drifter kind of getting himself involved in a lot, along with Eris. And our new, but not strange, Exo Stranger has made her return back into Destiny 2 because she kind of left us in Destiny 1 and she left us with a question mark. And she's been gone for a very long time. And she has no time to explain. Which is pretty interesting. I hope she has time to explain this whole situation that's going on onto this frozen frontier and on this frozen planet. So we're going to be looking forward to this frozen planet and the secrets that it has beneath this icy glacier. Now, we had a couple of leaks over the past couple of days. Kind of mentioned that there's a dark subclass coming into Destiny 2. For me, I didn't really believe it because they've been mentioning dark subclasses for the longest since the days of Destiny 1. And finally, Bungie has answered my prayers and I'm really happy. We're going to be wielding the darkness on September 22nd. A new threat has emerged. So does a mystery new power called Status. That is the new dark subclass that people are going to be looking forward to. It's rooted in the darkness, and Garnus will wield this new elemental power alongside with Arc, Solar, and Void, summoning epic supers to dominate the playing field. Titans and Warlocks and Hunters each use the status in different ways, from slowing down, flow, slowing down foes with the status fuels to shatter enemies with destructive might. So, we're going to be wielding the Darkness subclass in Fall DLC of Beyond the Light. And I'm going to be really looking forward to this subclass for a very long time. Like I mentioned in all my videos, they've been mentioning dark subclasses since Destiny 1. Since the Taken King, since the House of Wolves, since Crota. They've been mentioning a dark subclass for a very long time. And finally, it's made its course. And I'm going to be looking forward to it very soon. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about the dark subclass. Do you feel like it's something that you were looking forward to do you feel like you're going to be using a lot compared to your other subclass it's going to be a mixture of all three subclasses that i've been using so far so if you look at the subclasses that we've been using it's mostly like light so let's just put them all together and see what happens so that's what bungie decided to do another thing that was mentioned in the past leaks with uh the fall dlc well the name was collapse and the name name was veil vale. that was the name of the the foe enemies too that is going to be See, maybe, maybe it is because Bungie hasn't really tell us everything what's going to be coming into the Beyond the Light. I feel like they're holding a lot of back of a lot of information. That's my honest opinion. But during the leaks info, they were saying that there's going to be at least 27 or 32 new exotics coming into the fall expansion. And they give it a little glimpse of what is going to be happening. We're going to get new exotics along with the Golden Age tech. There's a lot of weapons that were kind of hidden in there. And we're going to be looking forward to. I hope that with the new raid is going to be involved. The new raid is going to be involved with the Deep Stone Crypt. Yes. The Deep Stone Crypt is going to be the destination for the raid. And you know there's a lot of weapons in that facility along with the Black Armory. And that's where I want to come in to say where do Ada plays into this part? Because we got the Exo Stranger. Ada is really weird. She's a really strange character. She's very kept to herself. She's from that French, you know, from that French family and everything. And the Deep Stone Crypt has been mentioned a lot with, of course, with Cade and everything else. If you look at some of the pictures that you're showing the screen, you look at some of the technology from this facility, you know, it, it kind of reminds you of the Black Armory weapons, along with the other raid that we had during the Black Armory. And I believe that it's going to be really interesting. For me, it's going to be really interesting because Ada is a very important character along with this stuff. And I wonder if she's going to be playing a big part in Beyond the Light. That's how I feel. The Queen, they haven't mentioned anything about the Queen yet. Um, she hasn't really, I don't know where she's at. She said she's fighting on a war at this point. And the last time we left uh, with the Queen's court, the pyramids was there. She, there was a pyramids on that little platform that she had. So 
I don't know if the queen's gonna showcase her ass um, in Destiny 2 Beyond the Light. The actual stranger has. We have Drifter, and of course, Aerith's crazy ass is a part of the plan too. And we're gonna be looking forward for that on September 22nd. But 32, maybe 27 new exotics was kind of mentioned in the leaks. We'll wait and see. They just kind of give us a glimpse of two exotics that you see on your screen there, and that was pretty much it. And then, yeah, that was pretty interesting. That reveal was very interesting. I did not suspect that from Bungie. I suspect maybe like a little teaser here, a little trailer here, and that was it. But they really, really did their thing in the reveal trailer and really surprised us. The thing that really surprised me from the reveal trailer is Season of Their Arrivals with the new dungeon. And then there was some news about the new dungeon it might be a limited time thing. I'm going to talk about that in the next video, how I feel like it shouldn't be a limited time dungeon because it's been a really fun dungeon. I just kind of like went in there and did a little few things myself. And it's really fun. I actually really like this dungeon compared to the other dungeon that we had in Shadowkeep. So I don't want to keep this video too long. I want to mention more of the stuff about Beyond the Light. There was a lot of tons of things that came out of this reveal that I didn't mention in this video, especially with the PS5 and what we're going to expect for the next two expansions from 2021 and 2022, along with old raids and planets that are going to be disappearing in Destiny 2 because Destiny 2 is such a big game that some of the things have to be gone out of the title and the files in order for it to kind of like move on to the future. Now, just to give you a short summary, judging by some of the things that they mentioned from the review, I don't think we're gonna get a Destiny 3. I think right now where Destiny's at, I don't think you need a Destiny 3. The reason why I said that is because you made the game free to play. So why would you have a Destiny 3? And how Destiny is right now, I, Destiny 3 is, eh, it's not really the best thing at this point to have a Destiny 3, in my honest opinion, because it's a free to play game. How are you gonna make a Destiny 3 if it's a free to play game? You see what I'm saying? Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about everything that was mentioned in the video and what you think about the Dark subclass. What do you think about the Exo Stranger, if you guys do remember her from Destiny 1 days, and along with the new raid with the Deep Stone Crypt being the raid destination for Beyond the Light. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about everything. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video or a dislike, and I will catch you guys in my next post.